Okay, here's our example video. Just one question. Now, in one question, I'm going to go into very detail. Because if you notice, if you have flipped through some of these past years, you would see that a lot of them are describing questions. They'll say, state and explain, state and explain, state and explain. Wow, so you really need to know how to state and explain what you see and what is happening. So here you have two dippers, okay? Like what we looked at in the previous demo, just water waves on the surface of the water. Now here you have two different paths to get to point P, which is what we want to look at here. Okay, and of course you have point P, 7.2 cm, 11.2 cm. Okay, thank you for telling me that. Uh, wavelength of the waves is 1.6. This is our lambda. Phase difference is zero. Very good. Okay, so they'll both start at, I guess this is crest, 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 crest. Okay, state and explain what is observed at P. When they see this kind of thing, you want to say, oh, I see waves. Oh, there's no waves. Why no waves? You want to talk about constructive or destructive interference. But how would you know if it's constructive or de destructive? Remember the path difference stuff? So let's find what is the path difference between uh, D1, P and D2. Let's call this path 1 and path 2. Okay, so path difference to get to P will be 11.2 minus 7.2 cm. So that will be how many cm? Ah? What cm? Is it? 11.2 minus 7.2. 4 cm, yes. So what does that mean? Well, that means one of the path is 4 cm longer than the other, obviously. But how many wavelengths is that? Oh, I don't know. Let me try calculate that. Okay, uh, in terms of wavelengths, one wavelength is 16. So 4 is how many wavelengths? Don't know. We divide. Okay, if one wavelength is 16, then... 4 cm is what? Okay, this is lambda. So if you divide out, you will get 2.5 lambda. So two and a half wavelengths. So that means your 4 cm corresponds to two and a half wavelengths. If you draw it out, you will see something like this. Okay, got some space on the right. So I'm going to draw out the two paths. The first path. Yeah, don't too big lah. Okay lah, okay lah, like this. Ah, yeah, too small. Ah. Sorry, <laughs> can't decide. There we go. Okay, so we just keep going and keep going. We can go forever. And you have another one from the second. So it's kind of like this in phase. Okay. But the second one is 2.5 wavelength difference. Okay, like I said, this, the first path should be shorter by 2.5 because 7.2 ma. Okay, so 2.5 should be where? 1 wavelength, 2 wavelength, 0.5. Wow, very big difference. So actually, oh, the first part only, we draw like that. Zzz. Very short. Actually, you can go some more one. La. You keep going, keep going. Okay, but it cuts off here. So here is, um, I guess you say 1 wavelength, 2 wavelength, and a 0.5. Okay, 0 0.5. So that means the path difference between the top one and the bottom one is 2.5. So will they interfere constructively or destructively? That's when you have to remember that they both will meet points P at some place. So I'm going to try to move this. Okay, so they both meet point P here. Let me extend this one backwards also. Okay, so do you see what I did just now? Okay, I had one wave that was 2.5 wavelength shorter, but I moved it to the front, so here is point P. Oh no, everything got erased. Point P. So this is path one, and this is path two. So if you look, if you just look at the picture, oh, here is going to be a destructive interference already. Because you see here, Positive A. You see here? Negative A. So destructive interference. Oh? Okay. This path is shorter. This path is longer. But they both will have to reach P at some point. That is drawing the waves out. Lah. Okay. If you want to move the waves around, just draw it and literally move around to see how it looks like. Anyway, so how do we know destructive? The shortcut is you look, you see the wavelength is 0.5 lambda. 
0.5 lambda means half a wavelength now. So half a wavelength shift. Okay, half a wavelength path difference. So that's going to be destructive. So how are you going to write that? Well, you just say, um, there is no ripples. That's what you say. What is observed at P? You can say no ripples because destructive interference. Or if you want to sound more scientific, you can use the term. You, will, you can say you will see a minima where there is zero displacement. Ah, that's another way to say zero displacement is observed. If you want to talk in terms of the water tank, then you can say and water is still, means no ripple. Lah. So you can say still or no ripple. In fact, this is what the mark scheme, if you check, they will talk about this. Okay, no ripple, no disturbance. If you stop there, not enough. State, we just stated what we see. Explain. Why like that? Ah, you must say path difference oh? or phase difference. Okay. So you can say because your path difference is, just now we say how much? 2.5 lambda. And that is destructive interference. Okay. You don't have to write the extra one. Now. So here is two marks. Oh. So first one you say, Water is still, water, no ripple, path difference, because path difference is this thing, then you get two marks already, that's C1 and C1. Okay. There's another way to talk about it, not only path difference, you can also say phase difference. Remember? Phase difference, you also say phase difference, path difference. What is the phase difference between both waves? Ah? How do you know? If you want to find your phase difference, you can use your 2.5 lambda to help you out here. Okay, so 2.5 lambda is 2.5 times what is 1 lambda? 360 degree is phase difference. So, what is that going to be? Wow, very big number, eh? 360 times 2.5. That's 900 degrees phase difference. So, you can say 900 degrees phase difference as your reasoning also can. So, 900 degree or this will be how many pi? Ah? 900 divided by 180. That's 5 pi in terms of radians. Also, you can say that. Okay, so these are odd multiples. So it means it will be destructive interference. So you can say all oh, phase difference of 900 or 5 pi. All this answer can write as long as you can describe it can already. Okay, so that's the first one. What is observed? Now they change up things. Look in part two. Still and explain the effect that now the phase difference is 180. Wow, how to do that? Okay, la, we do more animation here. Now, we already know that your waves will be destructive interfer destructively interfering each other, such as something like this. Okay? If you add these two waves together, they will cancel out. But now you are changing the phase difference already by 180. So it's basically you're taking one wave and you move it like that. Okay, so now there is a phase difference of 180 degrees or just pi. Or. Okay, so you see what happened now? Oi? Now crest align with crest, trawl align with trawl. Very nice. Now it become constructive interference for both waves. So you need to describe that. Now we've got water ripples. Okay, so you say now the water has ripples or wave. Mm, ripples. Yes, you could also say in the scientific terms has maxima or maximum displacement. Okay, that's what it means, la, maximum displacement. Ah, don't forget to say because, might as well, la, just in case. Okay, so because your waves arrive in phase now. Now they are in phase, yes. Sorry, now they arrive point P in phase. Okay, let's say this point P. In phase. Did you say arrive P, right? Okay, la, arrive P in phase. Okay, if you want to be even more detailed, okay, sure, you add in your... Phase difference. What's the phase difference now? Ah? Just now, phase difference was 5 pi. 
But now you add pi, so 5 pi add pi. So what would that be? 6 pi? Lo? And this is a multiple of 2 pi, which is a full cycle. So very good constructive, interfer constructive interference. Okay, la, or you want to say 1080 degree is also a multiple of 360 degrees. So because it's multiple of that, then you can say it's uh, constructive interference and therefore there are ripples now. It's okay. So this wave plus this wave together. At P, you will get pretty big amplitude there. This is a one mark question. So you say got ripples, can already know. But just in case, you can write the explanation. Might as well. Now, the last one, they change something else. Now, what if you have the case where, same like before, okay, two waves coming together, but the intensity for one wave is less than the intensity of the other. Phase difference is the same. So, we redraw this case on the top right. Lah. Okay, might as well draw it. So, previously, we have one wave like that. Okay, they are originally in phase, but because of their path difference, they arrive at P at different uh, phases. So, we just want to be constantly disrupted. And then, now the other one will be like this. So, they will cancel each other out. But now, your intensity of one wave is less than intensity of the other. What does that mean? You need to remember okay, uh, that intensity is proportional to amplitude squared. So since intensity proportional to amplitude means one of the wave has a smaller intensity than the other, which means they won't cancel out perfectly already. Whoa. Okay, so if I redraw this one, now your second wave has double the like a, double the double the what? Ah? How to say? Double the amplitude. Sorry, your brain hang. So something like this. Wow, very hard to draw. Okay. It's me trying to draw stuff. Let me just draw it here on the thing. Yeah, that's easier to draw. So I can see what's cancelling out. So who wins there? Probably the green wave law. You see the green wave so big. So you add together, it's not going to be a straight line anymore. Like a straight cancel out now. It's going to be different. Okay, so you can say since uh, the amplitudes are different, so there will now be ripples at point P. Because, because the amplitudes are not the same. So you can say, because the amplitudes are no longer equal, and they won't cancel out. Okay, so let's say that. And no longer cancel out. If you're wondering, like, wow, how to visualize, man, you think of, let's say I take this point, okay, my green wave is 2A. Okay, I say 2A. My blue wave is negative A only. So you add together, become what? 2A minus A. A war. So how are you going to cancel each other out? Okay, let me take this, this, this other part here. See, can cancel out or not? Now the green wave is negative 2A. The blue wave is A. What do you get? Negative A. Oh, so you can never properly cancel out. Okay. Previously, it was not this case. Huh? Previously. Okay, previously was something like this. And then you have another wave which is very nicely a eh, wrong. Another wave will be like that, same amplitude. So they will cancel out nicely. This is not a sending wave, this is two waves. So cancel out. Lo. So your resultant will be just a flat line in the middle. Cancel out perfectly. Okay? So this is now. Previously. I already write previously. So previously you will have A plus Let's say minus a. Cancel out perfectly. Zero. Okay. So that is the problem now. If you have amplitudes at a certain point where they won't cancel out, it's at P la, somewhere wherever it is. Okay. So that is how you can talk about no completely destructive interference. Two marks come from also you say you got ripples, there will be ripples. I have difficult to say there will be ripples. And you must also mention to get that one mark, there will be ripples because their amplitudes are no longer equal. So you say another B1 mark over there. Lo. So that's how you can get talk about your waves. So yeah, just remember you are finding what is happening at point P, wherever it is. 
I think it's about two and a half or somewhere. Uh, somewhere lah, you go and find. Okay. So this is just some ideas. I would suggest you try to learn to do the math for this part. Okay, all these five pi ah, two point five lambda, all this kind of thing. Try to do the math because as you go to more and more complicated scenarios, it'll be harder and harder to draw all these kind of waves. Okay, very hard already. So try to uh, learn to do the math for this kind of question. That's all for this question. One short and sweet one.